While browsing through the recent site of the day winners on awards, I came across this website that won just last week on April 15th. The layout was incredibly well crafted and it featured some really smooth and thoughtful micro interactions. As I scrolled down, this particular hover effect caught my eye. You can see as the cursor moves across the grid, the highlighted background lights perfectly snapping into place based on the card size and position. This type of direction aware hover effect is something you might have noticed on other modern websites too. It brings a layer of responsiveness, turning what could be a boring section into something that feels dynamic and interactive. We have explored similar micro interactions in previous videos as they consistently show how much of a difference even simple animations can make right alongside the more complex experiences we usually cover. And recreating these kinds of micro animations is also a great way to sharpen the fundamentals and get better at building interactive animations from the ground up. In this video, I'll show you how to recreate this interactive section using Next.js, something you can easily add on your portfolio to showcase your tech stack or even for corporate websites to feature clients or something. I've also put together a vanilla JavaScript version of this project, which is available for pro members. If you'd like to unlock the source code for this project, along with hundreds of other micro projects and monthly website templates, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Alright, let's jump into the code. To save us some time, I've already set up a fresh Next.js project and got it running locally. I'll start by cleaning up the default boilerplate so we can have a blank canvas to work with. First, I'll open up globals.css file and remove all the default styles. I'll do the same with page.module.css file, just wiping everything out. Next, let's head over to the home page. I'll clear out all the placeholder markup from the main file since we only need three main sections, the navbar, the container where we'll build the grid, and the footer. Inside the nav, I'll add two simple paragraph elements to balance the layout. Same with the footer, just adding a couple of dummy texts to keep the page from feeling empty. You don't necessarily have to add these, but it just keeps the structure looking complete. Now inside the main container, we'll set up the grid. In the original design, there are two rows, so I'll add two divs with the class name grid row. In the first row, I'll add three grid item divs, and in the second row, a few more. You can add as many items as you want, it doesn't really matter for the functionality. Inside each grid item, I'll place a paragraph element with some placeholder text. And finally, I'll add one more div inside the container called highlight. This will be the element we animate across the grid based on the cursor movement. That's pretty much it for the HTML setup. Let's move on to styling now. I'll start by resetting the default styles, setting margin and padding to zero and applying box sizing border box to everything. For the body, I'm using a custom font and setting the background color to a dark shade. The paragraph text is made uppercase with a slightly smaller font size and a bit of weight to make it pop against the dark background. Next, I'll style the nav and footer. Both will be position fixed, stretched across the full width of the screen with a bit of padding. The layout will be flex, spaced out evenly and vertically centered. I am giving them the same dark background as the body to keep it consistent. A thin border is added to the nav at the bottom and to the footer at the top using a slightly transparent white color. Inside the nav and footer, I'm also lowering the opacity of the second paragraph in the nav and all paragraphs inside the footer just to give them a more subtle look. Now moving on to the main container, the container is positioned relative, taking up the full width and full viewport height. It uses flex to center the grid, both vertically and horizontally. Inside it, the grid is styled with a 90% width and 60% height of the container. It's also flex arranged in a column direction with a light border around it. Each grid row and each grid item is flexible to evenly distribute space. They are also using flex to center the text inside them. For the first grid row, I'm adding a bottom border to separate it visually from the second row. And for the grid items, I'm adding a right side border to each, except for the last item in the row.
To make sure the text stays above the highlight rectangle, I am giving the paragraph elements inside each grid item a higher Z index. Now for the highlight itself, the highlight div is absolutely positioned at the top left with a white background. It's made non-interactive by disabling pointer events and transitions are added to make its movement smooth and natural. Finally, I am adding some responsive adjustments with a media query for screens below 900 pixels. In smaller viewports, the container will add vertical padding and the grid height will adjust automatically based on the content. Grid rows will stack vertically and each grid item will take up the full width with extra padding to make them visible. The right border is removed and instead a bottom border is added for separation. And since the hover effect is mainly designed for desktops, I'll simply hide the highlight element completely on smaller screens. That's all for the basic styling. Now that the page looks structured and clean, let's move on to the interactive part. First, since we'll be working with React hooks, we need to add use client directive at the top of the file. This will make sure our component is treated as a client side component inside Next.js. Then, I'll import use effect and use ref from React because we'll need both to interact with the DOM elements. Next, I'll create two refs, one for the container and one for the highlight. So I'll set up container ref and highlight ref and initialize them to null. After that, I'll attach these refs to the actual elements, both for the container and the highlight element. This way, we can directly reference and manipulate these elements inside our logic later on. Now, inside a use effect, we'll set up all the hover functionality. First, I'll get references to the container and the highlight from their respective refs. I'll also select all the grid items inside the container using query selector all and the first grid item separately because we'll need it to set the default position of the highlight when the page loads. Finally, I'll add an array of highlight colors. Each color will be used as a background of the highlight when moving between different grid items just to add a little bit of extra visual interest. Now that we have access to all the elements we need, let's set up the main functionality where the highlight box moves smoothly based on where our cursor is inside the grid. The plan is, we'll listen to the mouse movements inside the container. Whenever the mouse hovers over a grid item, we'll move the highlight to perfectly cover that item. We'll also change the highlight color based on which item we are hovering over. First, before anything else, I'll loop over all the grid items using for each method. For each grid item, I'll assign it a background color from the highlight colors array. I'm using a modular trick here just to make sure if there are more items than colors, the colors just repeat without causing an error. This color will be stored inside a data color attribute on each grid item. We'll pull this color later when the highlight moves. Now let's build a helper function called move to element. This function will be responsible for actually moving the highlight to the correct position whenever we hover on a new grid item. Inside this function, first, I'll get the position and size of the target element by using get bounding client right function. This gives us the x, y, width and height of that particular grid item relative to the viewport. We also get the bounding rectangle of the container itself. This is important because when we move the highlight, we want its position to be relative to the container, not to the entire page. Otherwise, if the container isn't aligned to the very top left, the highlight would jump to wrong positions. Then. To calculate the final movement, we subtract the container's left position from the item's left position to get the correct x and the same for the top. Subtract the container's top position from the item's top. Once we have the final x and y, we simply move the highlight using transform. We also set its width and height based on the grid item size and finally change the highlight's background color to the color we stored earlier. Now to actually detect when the mouse moves, we create another function called move highlight this function will run whenever the mouse moves inside the container. Inside this function, I'll use element from point function. This is a handy method that gives us the topmost element directly under the cursor at any point. If the element under the mouse is a grid item, we simply call move to element with that item. But sometimes when we hover directly on the paragraph tag inside the grid item instead of the grid item itself, the hovered element will be the paragraph, not the grid item. So to handle that, we also check if the parent of the hovered element is a grid item and if it is, we call move to element function on the parent instead. This way, whether you hover on the grid items container or just the text inside it, the highlight will always move correctly. After setting these two functions, I'll call move to element function once when the page loads. 
so that the highlight starts positioned over the first grid item by default. This makes the layout feel complete even before the user interacts. Finally, we add the actual event listener, we listen for mouse move events on the container and every time the mouse moves, we run move highlight function. And of course, to clean things up properly, we remove the event listener inside the written statement of use effect. This avoids memory leaks or bugs if the component unmounts. That's it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.